Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. New observations are again challenging astronomers' ideas about the so-called volcanoes on Jupiter's moon, Io. For nearly 40 years, astronomers have told us that Io is the most volcanically active body in the solar system. In 1979, NASA's Voyager spacecraft offered scientists on Earth their first glimpse of mysterious structures jetting hundreds of kilometers above the moon's surface, a phenomenon astronomers interpreted as volcanic plumes. But that same year, the world-renowned astrophysicist Thomas Gold proposed that the locations of the so-called volcanoes were instead the sites of powerful electrical discharges. Eight years later, in 1987, Plasma scientist Anthony Peratt and co-author Alex Dessler published the paper Filamentation of Volcanic Plumes on the Jovian Satellite Io. Peratt and Dessler argued that the filamentation and cross-sectional shape of the plumes are, quote, consistent with theories developed from laboratory observation. Nevertheless, despite the contributions of Gold, Peratt, and Dessler, planetary scientists have held to the theory that Io's mysterious plumes are the product of volcanism which is caused by Jupiter gravitationally squeezing the moon. But the problems with this theory have only continued to grow with better images and data from the Jovian system. NASA scientists have acknowledged their struggle to explain the plume's structure as volcanic in nature. Concerning the so-called volcano Vashitar, they state that the knots and filaments that allow us to track the plume's motions are still mysterious. In recent years, the tidal heating model applied to Io's, quote, volcanoes has been directly falsified by additional discoveries. In 2013, a geologic survey found that the locations of the plumes were incompatible with the predictions of the tidal heating model. And now, scientists observing the so-called plume of the volcano Loki have encountered a new mystery. A new scientist report on the observations states, Over decades of study, observers have noticed a pattern. About every 540 days, a wave of brightness starts at one end of the lake of lava and pivots anti-clockwise like a windshield wiper. That front of warmer lava moves about one kilometer per day until the whole lake glows hot. Then the surface of Loki cools until the process starts again. But in 2002, right when we thought we had Loki pegged, those phases stopped. Then in 2009, According to recent work by Catherine DeClear at the University of California, Berkeley, they started again, but are now moving clockwise, appropriate behavior for a feature named after the Norse trickster god. However, anomalous movements of Io's so-called volcanic plumes is not a new problem for astronomers. When the Galileo probe arrived in the Jovian system in 1996, it revealed that the plume of the so-called volcano Prometheus had moved more than 80 kilometers since it was first imaged by the Voyager probe. This fulfilled one of several predictions that physicist and Electric Universe proponent Wal Thornhill had made prior to the Galileo mission. Thornhill also predicted that the so-called vents of the volcanic plumes would be much hotter than lava, and that the plumes are in fact the jets of moving cathode arcs eroding the periphery of the dark areas that planetary geologists had been calling lava lakes. According to Thornhill, these so-called lava lakes are the solid dark surface of Io beneath the quote, snow that has been deposited by continuous discharge activity. Therefore, the quote, lava lakes would not reveal the expected heat of a recent lava flow. Each of these predictions received stunning confirmation. Io's volcanic hotspots were not only hotter than any lava on Earth, but were too hot to be measured by Galileo's instruments. Also as predicted by Thornhill, the discharging was found to be focused on the edges of the so-called lava lakes, though the rest of these dark fields are comparatively cold. In fact, the expected volcanic vents could not be found. Inspiring further astonishment among mission scientists, the quote, volcanic plumes emit ultraviolet light something inconceivable under normal conditions of volcanic venting. But ultraviolet light is, of course, characteristic of an electric arc. Space scientists have come to depend on Io's volcanoes to account for the extraordinary electrical activity witnessed in Jupiter's atmosphere. Many claim that charged particles from Io's volcanoes are responsible for the Jovian auroras, 
which are 1,000 times more intense than anything seen on Earth. In this scenario, the profuse electrical activity at Jupiter's poles, approximately 10 million volts, is generated mechanically by the planet's spin. Ions from the, quote, volcanoes on Io are thought to travel to the planet's poles, then interact with the magnetic spin-generated electricity to create an extraordinary charge exchange, producing the auroras. The following NASA statement, which quotes investigator Randy Gladstone, reads, The polar electric fields grab any charged particles they can find and slam them into the atmosphere. Particles for slamming can come from the sun, but Jupiter has another, more abundant source nearby, the volcanic moon Io, which spews oxygen and sulfur ions into Jupiter's spinning magnetic field. Somehow, these ions make their way to Jupiter's poles, where electric fields send them hurtling toward the planet below. Upon entering the atmosphere, their electrons are first stripped away by molecules they run into. But as they slow down, they start grabbing electrons back. The charge exchange reaction produces intense X-ray auroras. This rationale arises from the assumption that Jupiter itself has no net charge. But since it is behaving like a charged body, the scientists look to localized, mechanically induced charge separation, as if an island in space, through some internal process, can acquire and dissipate electric charge. From the Electric Universe perspective, what is actually occurring is an electrical connection between the Sun, Jupiter, and its moons. In recent years, discoveries have only supported this view. When scientists discovered the most prominent auroral trail, or footprint of Io in the Jovian atmosphere, they assumed it must be an effect of charge separation generated by Io's volcanoes. However, this theory was undermined in 2005, when Hubble images of the Jovian aurora revealed a similar electrical footprint imprinted by the moon Europa with its own swirling plasma tail. A research team wrote of this discovery, Europa is not thought to be volcanic. So what could produce the electrical current that zips along and eventually gives rise to Europa's auroral footprint? NASA investigators also found that the electrical exchange does not stop with Europa and also includes the moon Ganymede. As reported on this series, in recent years, space scientists have slowly edged closer to recognizing significant electrical discharge activity on planets and moons. It's now known that once a month, when the Earth's magnetotail passes over the Moon, the result is electrostatic dust storms and electrical discharges. And in the past year, scientists reported that a coronal mass ejection struck the planet Mars immediately before mysterious plumes were seen jetting hundreds of kilometers into the planet's upper atmosphere, a complete surprise to planetary scientists. The purely gravitational processes that astronomers still prefer have failed to explain Io's so-called volcanoes. But today, the basis is clear for scientists to consider an alternative explanation in our electric universe. For continuous updates on space news from the electric universe, stay tuned to thunderbolts.info.